right, boys and girls, this video is for fourth and fifth grade students. I decided to give you a video for a strategy that I've used before in the past with my students in fourth and fifth grade called the CUBE strategy. And CUBE stands for Circle, Underline, Box, Evaluate, Solve. Now the purpose of this strategy is for when you're doing any type of word problem, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, working with fractions or decimals, or if you have multiple operations within one word problem, this strategy is going to give you a guide so you won't feel so overwhelmed when you're performing the operations within the word problem. You're able to sit there and go through each step of this strategy so that you are able to grasp the concept of what the word problem is asking you to do. So, this is why I, I like to use the strategy called Cube, known as Cubes, because I've seen it become very helpful with my students if they take the time. And one thing that I'm noticing, a lot of students, they are rushing through word problems, forgetting those key words and important information. Those items are what's going to help you identify what operation or operations you need to perform within your word problem. So, cubes, let's get started. What I have here is an example word problem. This video is just on the strategy cubes. Then for fourth grade, starting at 4083, we are concentrating on word problems and this strategy is what is suggested that you guys use when performing this standard. So, this is a strategy used to help work through word problems. You will not be tested on this, but it is highly recommended that you boys and girls use this strategy when you come across a word problem in any grade level. I don't care if it's 12th grade, try to at least use this strategy when you are coming across a word problem so you know exactly what steps to take to identify all the important information and then get rid of the information that has no use to you, okay? Because we don't want to look at all that extra stuff, mumble jumble they put in there. We want the meat, the good stuff. What's the good part of a burger? The meat, the cheese, the bacon, the lettuce, the tomatoes. We want all that good stuff right here. And this is the inside of our hamburger bun. And we're going to take all that good stuff, all that good juicy meat and bacon and cheese and pickles and onions and all that good stuff. And we're going to take it and use it for our word problem. So let me stop rambling and get on with my word problem, okay? So circle. You're probably thinking, what am I going to circle through my word problem? Well, I'm going to tell you. You guys are going to circle your numbers. I'm going to take this title, huge strategy, and just move it over here so I can have more room to write. Then, underline. What if you want underline? When you come across a word problem after you circle your numbers, it may be more than one number, maybe one number or more than one, two or three, four, however you have your word problem, do not forget, and this is one thing my students forget a lot with word problems. Don't forget the number, words, as well. Like you, you might come across um, the number two. Whether it's in numerical form or word form, you still need to circle it. So be very careful when you're reading through your word problem because sometimes my students will overlook the word form of a number and they'll only pay attention to find the numerical numbers in the word problem. And that can mess you up when you're trying to evaluate your word problem, okay? So underline. What are you going to underline? You are going to underline the question. The question. The question is majority of times it comes at the very end of the word problem. Sometimes I see it as the second to last sentence in the word problem. So it all depends, okay? 
Next, you're going to box. You're going to box in, I can't sound what color I'm going to use. You're going to box in your key words. Keywords. And this may be words such as um, some, which tells you you're going to add, or the difference. which tells you you're going to subtract. You may come across um, the word each, and the word each could be used for addition or multiplication, it all depends. But you guys have to be careful and to really read through your word problem to make sure that you are boxing in keywords that are telling you whether you need to add, subtract, multiply, or divide within your word problem. So you're boxing in your keywords are going to tell you to box in your operation words that's going to help you determine what operation you need to perform to solve your word problem. Then we have evaluate. You are going to evaluate what you're working with. So ask yourself, what am I working with okay you look at your word problems okay I have my number circle I have my question underline of what they're asking for I boxed in my keywords that's telling me that hey maybe I need to add maybe I need to subtract maybe I should be multiplying or dividing and then I'm going to evaluate and say, hmm, put all this good information together to make this fabulous burger of a word problem. Then we move on to the last portion, which is to solve. Start working through your information to find, gotta move this down, your answer. So you're gonna take everything and start working through it and say, okay, Keep reading over your word problem. Read through it a couple of times, more than one time. It doesn't matter. Make sure you have what you need to begin working through your word problem. So at this point, I want you to pause the video, copy down all of this information that I wrote. You need to lean in and look. Make sure you have your math journal. And I know where you said it's on your video response sheet. It may say um, unit or standard. It's still unit one. But for the standard, you guys can just put right cubes strategy as your standard because this is a strategy that you can use for any grade level, any type of word problem. It's just a basic strategy to use as a guide to help evaluate word problems, okay? So pause the video, copy this down, and then I'm going to put my word problem on the next page, okay? All right, so what we have is our word problem right here. I'm going to put out to the side, move this over a little bit more, put right here, my cubes. I would suggest when you're working at your word problems, put cubes out to the side as a reminder. C stands for circle, U stands for underline, B stands for box, E stands for evaluate, and S stands for solve. 
Now, I'm going to go through and I'm going to begin circling my numbers, okay? First, before I do anything, let me correct myself. Read through your word problem with nothing in your hand. Put that pencil down and you focus on that word problem. Andrew discovered a buried treasure box. He opened it up and found that it contained 682 diamonds and 117 rubies. He sold 45 gems and bought 130 gems. How many gems does he have now? So I have a couple of numbers in my word problem. So I've read through it, and while I was reading through it, I'm kind of a different thinker. I like to picture what I'm reading in my mind. So if you can just try to picture what you're reading as you're reading each sentence, try to picture the person, Andrew, he discovered a treasure box. He's probably sitting there with a power hat and a um, fake Captain Hook on his hand, and he's like, hey, I found a treasure box. He opened it up, and what did he find? 682 diamonds, 172 rubies. These are his gems. He sold 45, then he bought 130. So let's go ahead and circle our numbers. So I am going to circle. Andrew discovered a buried treasure box. He opened it up and found that it contained 682 diamonds. That's number one and 117 rubies. He sold 45 and he bought 130. So I've circled all my numbers. Check, check. Now we're going to underline our question. Underline your question. So our question is, they want to know how many gems does he have now? Now, that means after he sold and then bought, how many does he have now? All right. Now, so I did that. Let me check, 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 check. Now we're going to box in our keywords. Now, you have to be very careful when you're boxing your keywords. While you're reading a word problem, again, think, hmm, what words jump out to me that will indicate whether I'm needing to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So let's read through it together and see. Andrew discovered a buried treasure box. He opened it up and found that it contained, that means it was in there, 682 diamonds and 117 rubies. He sold, sold, he sold. That sounds pretty cool. He sold. If I'm selling something, I'm subtracting from what I have. If I'm selling these pencils and pens, if I sold you one, I have one less, so I'm giving it away. I'm subtracting from myself. The word sold reminds me of the operation subtraction. So I just went ahead and boxed in the word sold and then right above it in parentheses, I put a subtraction sign just to remind myself that, hey, that keyword made me think of subtracting. Now I'm going to move on to the word bought. He sold 45 gems and bought. All right. He bought. So if I'm buying something, I'm adding to what I didn't have before. So if I'm buying something, I'm adding on to what I did not have beforehand. So I put in parentheses next to it, an addition sign. How many gems does he have now? The word now, I can see some of my students will say, well, now means you're still adding. You could think what he has added on to what he did not have before. So you can box in if you want to. I can see where some kids may say, yes, box it in, Ms. Davis. Others may say, no, don't box it in, Ms. Davis. But I'm just going to leave it like this because I think we have really two strong keywords that's going to help us tell, tell us what operations we need to perform. Oh, and there's one more. It contains 682 diamonds 
And when I hear the word and, I'm thinking about addition as well. I know a lot of my students say, if you're listing things, like I had $6 and my mom gave me $10 more. That word and kind of means, okay, you got something else. So we're just going to include that word and. So we box in our keywords. Now we're going to evaluate what we have. All right. I have number 682. I have the number 117. So it contains 682 diamonds and 117 rubies. So I'm going to add those two together. So that's 9, 9, 7. Okay. So that's how many in the treasure box. I got that. It's in my head. Boom. Got it. Now, he sold 45. Okay. So if he sold 45, but then he bought 130. I'm going to go in order of what's going on within my word problem. So the next thing he did, he decided to sell 45. So let's subtract 45. 9 minus 5 is 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. 7 minus nothing is 7. But then he was like, whoa, I need to go back and add to my collection some more. I can't believe I sold 45. So he bought 130 gems. Four plus zero is four. Five plus three is eight. Seven plus one is eight. So how many gems does he have now? Well, I have my answer right here in all its glory. 884 gems. So I circled my numbers, I underlined my question, I boxed in my keywords, and I put the operation that it reminded me of in parentheses above it or next to it, and then I evaluated what all I was working with by going in order, and then I solved it. Now I have my answer, which is 884 gems is what Andrew has now. So this is an example. If you would like more practice, just find any word problem of your choice. I'm about to record 4083 video, and there are a couple of word problems in there. I have a I do, we do, and you do. So there's three additional word problems that you guys can copy down and practice the cube strategy. Until then, please keep this strategy in your head. Circle, underline, box, evaluate, solve, practice it, learn it. Put the journal under your pillow and sleep on it. Something. Practice it. Know it. Love it. Breathe it. Achieve it because you can do it. And if you have any questions, by all means, you know the routine. Sign up for Davis Direct and I will be more than happy to assist you in that area. Until then, see you next video. Mwah.